Sonny Donnelly, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Today I'm on the road with O'Hara Davis. O'Hara, I would have got you uh, back at the gym, but we've had a long day today. Went to Newark to spar uh, world, WBA world champion David Avanessa. How was it? Um, today's been a long day. The sparring was like really good. Uh, we got nine good rounds in, and um, the guy's really tough. He's like really strong, and um, that's the kind of sparring that I need to get ready for this next fight. Obviously five weeks out and I know you've been doing 10, 12 rounds of sparring, obviously done nine today. Yeah. Um, do you think you'll be in the best physical shape come fight night? I reckon I'm in the best shape of, um, like now. I'm in the best shape of my life right now. So I've got, I've still got another four and a half weeks. So it can only get better and better and better. Um, I know that it's going to be my hardest fight, yeah. And I do know that he's going he's to be coming to win, which is why I'm making sure that for this camp, I've pushed myself extra hard and um, yeah. Obviously, you won the WBC silver uh, last time yeah. against Andre Scarpa in a shout-out points decision. Uh, yeah. Derry Matthews is a completely different fighter to Scarpa. Mm. Yeah. Um, how do you think you're going to adjust to his style? I can I reckon I can adjust to anyone. You know, I watch a few tapes of them, especially with these guys. I reckon that they're quite basic, one-dimensional. But what Derry Matthews has got that Scarpa hasn't is the experience. Derry Matthews has been a pro from when I was about eight years old. I mean, he had his first fight, like I was a kid and um, he's still in the game now. So all that experience that he's got, it's only good for him and it can only help him against me. But what I've got that he hasn't got, I've got the youth, I've got the, the skill, the talent, the ability. And um, I reckon that's what's gonna, that's what's gonna shut his mouth. Um, you come across, I've got to say, a lot different on camera now when I'm yeah. speaking to you yeah. than online. A lot, you've been getting a lot of hate online yeah. because of yeah. how much you've been calling everyone yeah. in the division out probably yeah. um do you think people sort of judge you based on social media and they don't know the real you this is the entertainment business and i feel like to get anywhere in this game you have to entertain like i'm not going to be one of them guys that that go online and say oh i'm friends with everyone that's on my weight class and let's go out and have a drink like that doesn't sell what sells is, is, is when i tell a person like uh, debbie matthews like i want to like i want to knock you out like i'm coming for you like I want to, I want to, I mean like all that stuff is what, is what, is what sells and this is the entertainment game and I reckon you've just got to be an, an entertainer. Um, yeah, so that's, it's just, it's just entertainment. Like how I am in person to the people that I know, I'm different because obviously I'm not fighting the people that, are, that I train with, the people in my gym, but there isn't any feud, like there ain't no ego. But when it comes to these other people that are in my weight class, like there's 100% ego there. So like when I'm so when I'm, I'm I'm talking to them online, it's like I'm coming for you, like I'm coming to knock you out, and then the fans see all that stuff, and it sells, and that's what brings excitement. So why I get all the hatred I get online when I'm only trying to bring excitement? I reckon I should be I should be, I should be getting love, because I make I'm I'm making things I'm making things excited. Everyone's gonna come and, and tune into my fight and say, Ah, oh, Harold Davis, he's been talking all this all this stuff, all this nonsense. Let's see how he fights. So I'm giving them something to look forward to and in exchange I'm getting I'm getting hatred and um, but it's just a part it's just a part of the game. You know, I've just realised it's just a part it's just a part of the game. You look at anyone else in a boxing career that have gone and spoken a lot of trash. They um they they they're not liked but then again if they win they're the people that get all the money. So you just have to understand how the game works and um, play so your sort role. Of, you just got to worry about yourself and Exactly you just gotta play your role and, and like this isn't the role that I wanted. I didn't want to be the bad guy that everyone hates but since everyone does hate me and I am I am looking like the bad guy I'm like I'm just gonna embrace that role I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna embrace that role and you know what I feel like sometimes I'm gonna make it worse if they, if they don't like me I'm gonna say things out of the norm that are gonna make them hate me even more and um, so sometimes you say stuff just to get a nibble yeah people. I do I do because I know people I know people don't like me and I know that it gets under their skin and um, you know the more I do that stuff the more people are gonna tune into my fight March fourth, everyone's gonna everyone's gonna be looking at that fight. Obviously, you're on a will the more fights gonna be announced, but a big bill yeah. anyway. Yeah. Co-main event at the moment to yeah. Hay versus Bell. Yeah. And don't forget, I'm coming as the amateur. I had 18 fights as an amateur. I didn't box for England or like for GB or or any of that stuff. So there wasn't any credentials for me. I turned pro, had my first and second fight on uh, small hall shows. You, you know, people don't know my second fight. I made under 200 pound. In my, in my second in my second fight so I've done it I've done it I've done things the hard way I've done I've done things the hard way and things weren't ever easy but you know what 
my first fight I went on um, I came on iFilm spoke a lot of a lot of a lot of um, a lot of like smack. garbage smack talk my second fight I've done the same thing um, got introduced to my coach Tony Sims bang the matching deal came it came about so tell me who's had 18 fights as an amateur had 14 fights as a pro and is then going to be co and then is is going to be co main event on a on a massive pay per view card Do you, like you don't like you don't see that all the people you see up there now people that have boxed for England or for GB as an amateur or, or they've done this as a pro me I've got the least experience but yeah I'm on a big stage so even though people can go and say what they want about me it's you've got to give you. me some props and some credit for what I'm doing because it seems to be working and even this interview now a lot of people that don't like me are going to be listening to this so you know I mean I think the thing is that people Acknowledge the skill and admire yeah. what you've done as a boxer, yeah. but maybe you just don't like the way you handle things. I think that you do get props in yeah. a boxing perspective, yeah. but as a person, some people may not like the way you go and handle yourself. I think I handle things the right way, because I reckon if I handled things any other way, who knows, I'd still be fighting on small horse shows, having to fight once or, or two times a year, because I can't sell enough enough tickets. All these people that are saying bad things about me, if I was to fight on those small horse shows, they weren't going to buy any, any tickets to come and see me fight. They weren't going to help me. You know, if things go wrong, they ain't going to be there for me. I can't go to them and be like, I need a bit of help. So why do I care what they say? It literally doesn't faze me. It doesn't bother me. People think I spend my time online crying over all the comments. It don't faze me at, at all. At all. So how, how, how people how people view me, I don't, I don't really care. The only people that I care about are the people in my gym, my coach, the people that I see every day that, I, um, that I'm in the gym with. You know, things are all good with us in the gym. In our gym, there ain't no ego, there ain't no arguments. Um, you know, so that's the only thing I, I care about because they're the people that I'm closest to in the boxing industry. I think you've made some good points there, to be fair. Yeah. So I don't think many people can argue that, but uh, you had a little training campaign in Portugal, yeah. uh, a bit of warm weather training to get away from the, the freezing cold yeah. of East London, how was it? Oh, tough, <laughs> tough, like, to say the least, it was really tough. Uh, you, you know, Tony had us up at like 7 o'clock in the morning, running uh, an hour and a half on the stand like, on the beach, where like because we're, because we're on the beach, like, as you're running, your feet sinks in into the sands kind of yeah, thing. a bit harder. And yeah, like your feet sinks into the sand and like it just makes it harder, like it does your legs in and then you go and like you go back home and like I just want to go to bed, I just want to lay down, relax. And you got to go to the gym afterwards and you got to spa or you got to do pads and then you go back to, back to the hotel, you relax again and then you got to train again at night time. You go to bed again, then you get up in the morning and do the same thing over and over again every single day and uh, it was just really tough. It's a tough, it's a tough life for some. It is a tough life but then again you know I said to myself things could be worse you know the career um, before uh, before I got into boxing I was I was a uh, I was in the streets I was doing all that stuff so I'm thinking I could be in jail right now I could be I could be doing anything I could be anywhere in life but like no open up the window you see the sun outside I'm in Portugal you know just work hard just work hard now and in a few years, as long as you work hard now, you do things right. You reap the rewards. In a few years, if things go well, with a bit of luck, things if things go well, you, you know, you can be on, on top of the world. But then again, I, there, there's another thing where I think to myself: if I don't work hard, if I just if if I if I just rest or or, or um, if I cheat and things go wrong, and then I lose, and then things go bad, it's going to be a long road back. So I'm like, just work hard, man. Just work hard and just. Because after the fight, I have the time of my life. Literally, after the fight, I'm the happiest guy in the world. I go to Mc I go to McDonald's. I get all my burgers, and you know, after the fight, things are all good. So I just endure for these next five or six weeks of hard work, and then have the best time ever before your next camp. During these four or five weeks, you're having a birthday, aren't you? Yeah, my birthday is uh, next week, Thursday. Uh, for my birthday, I, so I said to my coach, "Ah, oh, we're gonna have an easy day on my birthday." My coach said to me, "Well, on your birthday, you gotta be up at six in the gym at seven o'clock, we're at the running track first thing. You can have uh, an omelet for breakfast, you know, you have a little breakfast and then you're back in the gym again. And then you gotta go home, go to bed, you gotta wake up and you gotta train again. I'm like, that sounds like a good birthday, doesn't it? <laughs> I could think of better ways, but each to their own, <laughs> Yeah, mate. but, you know, you know, that's my, and that's my 25th birthday, you know. But that's the kind of thing, that is the kind of, 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 of dedication. That, and that an athlete should have. 
and um, you know, on my birthday I could be doing anything, I could have a little cheat day, but like nah, I'm just in the gym, hard work, because like there's a goal, and like there's a goal, and uh, that's the only thing on our minds, that's why I like my coach, because we're on the same page, like he wants me to work hard, and I, and I want to work hard, so we gel perfectly. Like we joke, like we joke perfectly. I'm not, I, I'm not, com I don't complain that I've got a gold gym on my on my birthday, or that I've got to train extra hard on my on my birthday. You know, as long as I train hard, I win this fight. I can celebrate my birthday then. That's so, true. That's, that's how I say. Gourmet kitchen burger. Exactly. Exactly. Gourmet burgers. You wear. I'll have one for you on your birthday though, just to just yeah. just to make sure. Yeah. Send me a picture. Oh. <laughs> Um, I spoke to Anthony Yard um, yeah. a few days ago. Well, yeah. Few, well, yeah, it was a few days ago, last week. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about uh, car music. Yeah. Today, you played a song, and I said, this ain't a song, and you went, no, it's just from a video game when yeah. I was younger. Yeah. What is the car music about, man? Come on. You know, sometimes, it depends on, like, on how you feel. I go by how I feel, and, like, a lot of the time, I'm just in a calm mood, and, like, I think about life a lot. So, like, if I'm in that mood where I'm thinking about life, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to be listening to rap where it talks about shooting people and robbing people. I just want to listen to something calm and that's going to make, make. That's good. That's going to. That's going to keep you in that calm mood. And a lot of people have like a lot of issues with my. What sort of music do you listen to when you want to tweet stuff about people? Fifty Cent, <laughs> Uncle Murder, <laughs> Papoose. <laughs> all, oh them, all them kind of people. And who is better at Top Golf? Because I asked him, so I've got to ask you. Listen, yeah. At Top Golf, I beat Anthony every time. Literally every time he no, I think I think I think Anthony's won once. Anthony's Anthony beat me once. Literally every every other time we've been up to Top Golf, like we like our games at Top Golf, we put um a bit of money down. So I might put down five pound. Oh, he, pound. he said he's, he's already said he played me for a score. Sometimes, yeah. Like, I remember one time, like me and Annie and a few of us went to Top Golf, and I played him for like a bit of money, and then I won every time. I won. You know, if you if you ain't got any cash on you, then you gotta go out. Then you gotta go. Uh, then like you gotta go cash point and uh, draw out some dough. You know, if, if you lose, you lose. Can't pay, can't play. Exactly. You can't play, you can't play. So even sometimes I went there, I didn't have any cash on me, but I knew that I'm not that I'm not gonna lose. I I, I, I went there with like faith and hope, and I was like, I know that I'm gonna win. Faith and hope in an empty you know, wallet. Obviously, I ha <laughs> obviously I had my bank card in case I lose. I yeah. gotta go. I gotta go and get some cash out of the cash point. But then every time I won, so he was ended up going out to the cash bank and getting out a bit of money. You got a touch him. <laughs> um, O'Hara? Yeah. Um, thanks for your interview. Also, I mean, let me say one last thing. Go on, go on, go on. I, I go on. my tweets, I get a lot of tweets where people saying, oh, I'm going to slap that lisp out of you and blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't have a lisp. I've been born with um, a star. That's what I've been born with from birth. Uh, when I was young, it was a lot worse. Like, it was like really bad when I was young. To the point where I used to go to shops and um, I'm trying to ask for something and I couldn't get the words out, like what I'm trying to get. Like, let's say if I wanted to get a LucasAid, I literally couldn't get out the air while I couldn't get out certain words. And like, when I was young, it was um, really bad. Like, so if you look at videos at the start of my boxing career, it was, it was there still a lot more than it is now. It's still here now. I do, I do have it now, which you can probably tell, but it's just not as bad. So when people say I'm going to slap that list back at you or he's going to take care of that list, I don't have a list. It's a starter. And as time goes on, it's only getting better and better and better. So that's just um, to kind of clarify. And anyone that's trying to bully anyone with anything, fuck off. Yeah. That's what you yeah. Say. You know, starter, but I'm glad because with me, it's getting a lot better. Like, I'm getting more confident talking behind the camera. It's like the first time that you get a camera in your face, is like, I'm getting my words wrong. And then I used to kind of start out a lot more. Or, or, or like if I'm talking in a crowd in a press conference, I'll try to keep my words as few as I can. But like, you know, as time goes on, my start is getting better and better and better. So just for everyone saying that I've got a lisp, just I just want to kind of correct that. It's not a lisp, it's a star. Exactly, so if you're going to give him hate, at least give him hate for the right thing, all right? Exactly, just <laughs> give it the right name, <laughs> exactly. please. <laughs> <laughs> all right then, well, O'Hara, uh -huh. uh, thank you for your time. Uh, thank, you. thank you for driving me to Newark today. It was a lovely experience. and. Uh, I'm sure I'll catch up with you before the end of the fight, but until then, okay. keep playing top golf, uh, keep on your diet, Winnie's Mills, get yeah, at them. Definitely, you know, Winnie's Mills are the best, you know, they do all my food and um, I can't complain, it gets me on weight good all the time and, um, and, it, and, and the food tastes good. So anyone that's looking for a nutritionist or anything, Winnie's Mills. Or me, you see how good my pasta was today? Yeah, that was amazing. Thank you, he's actually <laughs> top chef over here, I'm just a man of all talents. But like I said, O'Hara, mm. thank you for your time, I'll catch up with you soon, Yeah. until then.